Hello everyone and welcome to another math tutorial. This video is going to pick up right where the last one left off where we were talking about circumference and arc length and today we're going to talk about areas of circles and sectors. It's going to be very similar as far as how we set up and solve problems just we're going to be looking for areas instead of lengths today. Let's take a look at how to find area of a circle to get us started. All right, we begin with something that you all are probably quite familiar with. You've no doubt used this before uh, in middle school on your way up to high school geometry. Uh, and this is area formula for a circle. Uh, so here we have a circle. There's only one measurement that we're interested in and that's the radius right here. Our area formula is written in terms of that radius uh, and it is that the area is equal to pi times the radius squared. There is no formula that we're going to go over that we're going to use for diameter. Quite simply, if you're given diameter, it's much easier to just convert that to radius and use this formula than probably it is to utilize two different formulas for, for whatever measurement you're given. Uh, so we're just going to use this one in terms of radius. Let's see a couple of example problems with this area formula to get us started. All right, let's begin with a very easy problem to get us going. Directions are to find the area of a circle with a radius of 4.5 meters. So our area formula, again, is pi times radius squared. Uh, we want the area when the radius is 4.5 or 4.5. So it's going to look like that. Uh, let's go ahead and do this how we began the last one. I'm going to give you an exact answer first. So 4.5 squared is 20.25. So we would have 20.25 pi. The units in this problem are meters. So our units, because this is area, is going to be meters squared. So we're going to answer like this if we are asked for an exact answer or if we're asked for one that is in terms of pi. If that's the case, we stop right here. If we want an approximate area, then we're just gonna type 20.25 times pi and just use the pi button that's on the calculator. That gives me 63, Point six two, uh, So no pi anymore because we computed that in, but we are going to put our units meters squared. And we'll do that if we are asked to give an approximate answer or if we're asked to round to some place value, nearest tenth, nearest hundredth, etc. If I was asked for anyone like anything like that, then I would definitely go this far. The next example problem is asking us to find the diameter of a circle with an area of 176.7 square meters. Now, first of all, we don't have a formula that we're going to use for area in terms of diameter. So let's just use the area formula that we have, and that is that the area equals pi times the radius squared. So what we're going to do first is we're going to find the radius and then we'll do a very simple conversion to convert the radius into the diameter at the end of the problem. So let's plug in our area 176.7 equals pi times radius squared. We need to divide both sides by pi so our radius squared equals 176.7 divided by pi. And then we need to get the square off of there. So we will now take the square root of both sides. So the radius is the square root of 176.7 divided by pi. And I'm going to go ahead and convert that into a decimal. So I'm going to take 176.7 divided by pi to start. And then I'm going to take the square root of that answer. And I get to the nearest hundredth or tenth would be the same. I get 7.5. Okay, so that is radius. We 
need diameter. So all we have to do now, the diameter of a circle is equal to twice the radius. So our diameter is going to be 2 times 7.5, which gives us a diameter of 15. Since the units of area are square meters, our units are going to be meters. Next thing we're going to talk about is the sector of a circle. A sector is just simply a region of a circle that's bounded by two radii and the intercepted arc. So right here you can kind of see it. The shading is not very great. So let me just shade this in. The sector of this circle is right here. Okay. Sector is the area of the circle that is bound by two radii got these two radii here and the arc that those radii create. You can think of a sector of a circle as like a slice of pizza or a slice of pie if you want to think of it like that. So we're going to go over how to find areas of those slices. And we're going to do this almost the exact same way that we did uh, length of arcs. And that is we're going to use a proportion. And I'm going to set it up like the last time where I'm going to put two ratios equal to each other. Okay, so get a couple ratios set up. Uh, I'm going to do one ratio for areas. I'm going to do the other ratio for uh, measurements and degrees. And I like to do these where I put the part on top and I put the whole amount on bottom. So, so here's what it's going to look like. I'm going to do in the numerator of this first fraction, I'm going to do the area of the sector divided by the area of the circle. And I'm going to equal that to, uh, just like the last time when we were finding arc length, I'm going to do the measure of arc AB divided by 360. Uh, and if you want, you can certainly replace this with pi r squared since that's our formula for area of a circle. Okay, let's jump to a few example problems where we show you how to do this. Okay, first example problem. We're asked to find the area of the shaded sector. And the shaded sector is this part right here. It's this small 140 degree slice of this circle. My proportion is going to look like this. I want the area of sector, and we're just going to call this sector PQR, okay, starting at one point on the circle to the vertex of that angle to the other point on the circle, divided by denominator needs to be the area of the entire circle. And the area of this circle is pi times the radius, this is the radius right here, pi times the radius squared, and that is equal to the measurement of the arc, which is 140, divided by the entire circle in degrees, which is 360. All right, let's go ahead and do a cross product. So we're gonna have 360 times the area of sector PQR equals, and I'm going to have 140 times pi times, I'm just going to change 4 squared to 16. We'll divide by 360 and so the area of sector PQR is equal to, so let's go to the calculator and figure this out. I want 140 times pi times 16. I'm going to divide that by 360 and I get about 19.55. This is area, units are centimeters, so we're going to do centimeters squared. Okay, the next problem, we're gonna try and find the area of the circle. Let's get our proportion set up. 
So I'm going to have, again, a ratio for areas, a ratio for degree measurements. I'm going to put the part on top. I'm going to put the whole thing on bottom. So the part of the area is the sector area. And we have that sector area given to us right here. This tiny little slice right here has an area of 4.1 square feet. So that's going to go in the numerator of that problem divided by the entire area of the circle, which I don't know, and that's what I want. I'm just gonna call that A for area. This ratio is gonna be degrees, so this tiny little slice is formed by this 25 degree angle, so that's gonna be the numerator, that's the part, that's the small piece, and the entire circle is 360. Let's do a cross product, so we have 25A, equals 4.1 times 360. We're gonna divide both sides by 25. So the area is gonna be 4.1 times 360 divided by 25, which is 59 0.04 units are square feet. Okay, our final problem is a little bit different than what we had previously seen in the last two examples. It's what we would call maybe a composite figure. We've got kind of a combination of multiple shapes. And here this problem is asking us to find the area of the shaded region. And so it might be hard to see, but the shaded region is all these little areas that I'm gonna trace out here for you. It's these four corners of this square. And then we've got these areas in here. So basically it's everything but these four circles that we see. And so the question is, how do we find that area? There's, there's no formula for finding the area of this shape here, or all these little shapes that I'm tracing out. So how do I do that? Well, the answer is I'm gonna find the area of the whole thing, and I'm gonna remove or subtract from that the area of these four circles, so it's kind of like cutouts. And if I take away those circles, it's gonna leave me with everything else left over. So that's my strategy. I wanna do the area of the square minus now these circles are all the same. Then notice that these circles are all congruent circles. So I can do four times the area of the circle. That's gonna give me all four circles taken out at once. How do we do this? How do we find area of a square? So area of a square is just the length times width of the square, and that's gonna be 20 and 20. So we need to do 20 times 20, that's our area of the square. The area of a circle, that's what we're going over in this particular lesson, is how to find the area of a circle. So I have the four times, and then the circle's area is pi times, and now I want the radius squared. So what's the radius of these circles? Um, well, if the entire thing is 20, so if this length right here is 20, that means from here to here is just 10, uh, which means five and five. Five is gonna be the length of our radius. So I want four times pi times five squared. All right, 20 times 20 is 400, minus four times pi times five squared is 25. So we have 400 minus four and 25 is 100 pi. Now, I can't put these two numbers together because this one has pi and this one doesn't. So if I wanted an exact answer, I'm gonna go ahead and put units on this. It's area, so we have inches squared. And that would be finished. Again, if we want an exact answer, that's it. Uh, if I can get by with an approximate answer, then I'm gonna go ahead and type this into the calculator. So into the calculator, 400 minus 100 pi is gonna be about 
0.84 inches squared. And that's going to be an approximate answer. So again, just always paying attention to the directions. How are you asked to report your answer? And then give the appropriate one based off that. Okay, that concludes this video. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next one.